Hi, this is Faith, and you are watching The Faith Factor. Holla. Welcome, welcome. This is Faith, and you are watching The Faith Factor. And I am going to go into some nuances and break down some things that I've learned over the years that I want to share with you. Right now, the title of this stream is Good Girls versus Bad Girls. People, there is a thin line between hoes. <laughs> and good girls and we gonna get into the nitty gritty of it today because see I get so sick and tired of every time you know I, I speak about a better class of women the first thing people want to think about is their own insecurities that's what it is the first thing people want to run to oh she about to talk about my booty shorts Baby girl, ain't nobody thinking about you, your booty, or your shorts, okay? A better class of woman, as I have always maintained, is a mentality. It's what's within you. And I don't tell anybody how to live their lives. I don't tell anybody what to do because you're all grown. But there is a better. There's a right way. There's a wrong way. And I will stand on that and maintain that until the day they put me in the grave. So let's talk about these good girls. We got a, a category, category, ugh, goodness, I can't talk, a category, categorization. I hope I said that right. 
<laughs> of what a good girl is supposed to be. So we think of good girls, we think of the chick that ain't out here with the high body count having sex with everybody. When we think of the good girl, what else we think about? Give me some examples, y'all. Help me out. When we think of the good girl, we thinking of um, Miss I'm, I'm going to be helpful to everybody. I'm here to be Miss Susie Sunshine for that ass. I'm fit, feminine, and friendly. Shout out to the late Kevin Samuels. Good girls. Demetrius Hashikata says when he thinks of a good girl, he thinks of a woman that's generous. What else y'all get? Virtuous. Yeah, we said low body count. So that's what we categorize a good girl. Oh, damn, Demetrius, empathetic. All right, keep them, keep them coming, keep them coming, keep them coming. So these are all good things that we find in good girls. And see, I just want to loving, yeah. And we'll, we'll get into the loving part because I got something to say about that. Respectful. Hmm. Demetrius, submissive. BMT, submissive, really? I'm going to have to open up. I'm going I'm, to I'm drop the link. I'm going to drop the link because, see, it seems to me as if the fellas got all these com convoluted ideas of what good is. Okay, so submissive, respectful, loving. Uh, wait a minute, BMT. Her voice can't raise up. That's damn near. You done knocked off about half the women now. Half the women ain't good, BMT. Damn near every woman got a high-pitched voice. Some of us learn how to whisper. Some of us learn how to walk softly and carry a big stick. Demetrius says, an honest woman. So, okay, so far we got a good woman is loving, respectful, submissive, honest. Good evening at the Unrated Darkness. Good to see you. Empathetic, generous, virtuous. We got all these good things for a good woman. Demetrius religiously in tune. Um, okay, that's a personal preference. Okay, you did say personal preference. Y'all, y'all tripping. The men in the chat, y'all. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about y'all just yet. I'm gonna let y'all go ahead and say what y'all think a good woman is. So all of these things. So now let's go to the flip side. What's a bad girl? What's a bad girl? Come on, y'all. I know y'all men down there. Y'all got your ideas. Y'all tell us all the time, especially when it comes to black women. Y'all got a whole list that's a, like 99 yards long for black women of what bad is. What's bad to y'all? Is it, um, a high body count? Is it that she give it up on the first day? What's a bad girl? <laughs> Demetrius said a, a dang psychopath. <laughs> BMT, BMT says single mothers aren't good women if they walked from their man. Wow. Wow. So basically... So far, two men have said a psychopath, a single mother, BMT threw it out there, a single mother is a bad woman. Y'all, y'all is something else. See, this is what I'm this is what ladies pay attention. Pay attention to what's good and what's bad. Because they they laying it on out here. So a, a woman that's a psychopath, a woman that's a single mother. Um, a woman with a high body count. I'm just going to throw that in there because 
some I don't know. I, the high body count might be good for some of y'all. Some of y'all want the women to be more easily accessible. So I never know with that. Y'all kind of hypocritical when it comes to uh, a woman's sexual promiscuity. Demetrius Hachikata says, Higashikata says, a woman who endangers others with her actions. Now, this one, Demetrius, that one I actually do agree on. I agree with you on that one. That is the very definition of a bad girl. The very definition. BMT says a woman that's not a virgin. BMT is trolling, y'all. Let the record show. BMT is in here trolling. <laughs> a woman past 25 hit the wall. Yeah, he definitely trolling now. He, he definitely trolling. <laughs> okay, well, good girls and bad girls to me are interchangeable depending on who the woman is and what the intention is. Now I have maintained, again, I'm gonna say this over and over, a better class of woman doesn't mean you're a good girl. A better class of women don't make you a doormat. A better class of woman don't mean you don't have a high body count. Better class of woman don't mean that you don't speak up for yourself. You don't defend yourself. Oh, pathological liar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Being a better class of woman is a mentality and a whole vibe. It's something that is ingrained deep within you to want to be better. We're not saying that you're perfect. We're saying that you want to be better. Everybody should aspire to be better than what they was even yesterday. But there are some good people out there, people that are self-proclaimed good people. These self-proclaimed good women. Y'all know what I'm talking about. These are the people that have their ass way high on their back. Think they can do no wrong when the road to hell is paved with all of their so-called good intentions. Y'all know people like that, don't you? But these are the self-proclaimed good people. These are the women who are married. They've been married for years and years. And they figure they're good because that wedding ring makes them good. But in reality... But in reality, they're the biggest hell raisers at church. They're the, the women that sit on the porch and call shit all day in the community, spreading rumors, talking behind a girlfriend's back, getting and inserting themselves in other people's business. But these are the so-called good people. There's a thin line between a hoe and a nun. Some of these good women, they ain't even got to be married. They could be in a long-term relationship, living with their man for years and years. Bored housewives and women that live at home. Soon as the cable man come, their favorite cable man, their favorite handyman, the favorite guy that come work on the car, Soon as he come around, she not a good girl anymore. That good girl start flirting, don't she? 
Now she might not be giving up no yams, maybe. But what she is doing is she's giving off a sexual vibe. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Your uncle's wife that like to hug you a little bit too close. And she might have accidentally swiped your balls. These the good girls stuff because they married or they've been in a long term relationship and they can and they want to tell everybody. They want to get everybody advice. On how to get what they get. Right, Amanique, the favorite FedEx guy. BMT, what? <laughs> Y'all know, BMT, you, you are not going to control me today. He says, if you a woman and go around looking men in their eyes, you're a Jezebel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no. There's nothing wrong with making a little eye contact. But it's that lingering eye contact. And see, this is why I can't stand sometimes when people be talking about their good girls. Because some of y'all are just good hoes and you had it better than others. Some of these good girls, while they may not have children, that they just don't have any children that they gave birth to. I know a lot of good girls that have been down to the abortion clinic once, twice, or three times. That's the reason why I say, is there really any such thing as a goodly person? There's a lot of people out here and we all have flaws. And I'm not judging nobody for their flaws. If you had to make a decision, such as having your child or not having your child, that doesn't make you good or bad. Newsflash. That don't make you good or bad. But what makes you a bad person, and this is just in my opinion, is like Demetrius Hagashikata brought up earlier. If you bring harm to others, you use your feminine wiles to bring harm to others. So that means that you would lie compulsively to make yourself look good and to, and to get out of any trouble. So if you're married and you know that that baby ain't your husband, you're going to lie and say that that baby is your husband. And if you get caught messing around with the milkman, you're going to laugh and say he raped you. This is the definition of a bad girl. But we get so caught up in these labels that we forget that we are trying to put humans in these boxes. And everybody is human. Everybody that made mistakes. Everybody them falling short. But there is a thin line between falling short and being willfully evil. And there's a lot of willfully evil bitches out here. And there's a difference. That's the reason why I wanted to talk about my better class of women. Because a lot of people were getting it mixed up. They were getting all the angles wrong. I kept saying it's a mindset, it's a vibe. It's a mindset, it's a vibe. Here's another example. Now, I lived on the south side of Chicago where there was a lot of prostitution, a lot of gang banging, a lot of gambling, a lot of murders. 
And guess what? Being in that environment, you could not be a lady in that environment. My mother raised me to be a lady, but she also raised me not to be a fool. So I stood up for myself. I had to get loud and ignorant with some people sometimes. Now, some men in here said a woman raising her voice makes her a bad woman. But what if she's in an environment where she can't be a lady all the time? See, certain situations call for a lady. And then there are certain situations where you got to take the lady cap off and put on the bitch cap. That's the reason why I said there's a thin line, y'all. See, I can be good and bad. Because of the environment that I was in, oh yeah, I cuss people out on a regular. And twice on Sunday. I'll get to that, Demetrius. And BMT, it's not saying I'm equal to a man, but recently there was a video of a white woman who was in a gym. She had let a guy into the gym that she thought was there to exercise. And when the guy came into the gym, she's there wearing her gym outfit like she's supposed to, it's tight form fitting, you know, but it's, it's a gym outfit. She's in the gym doing what she's supposed to do, work out. And he came in there to grape her. Now, was she supposed to be a lady in that moment? Or was she supposed to kick his ass? Was she supposed to fight back? Or was she supposed to wait for Tr Prince Charming to come save her? See, all the men in the room talking about a woman equaling up to a man. I need y'all to answer that for me. Because in that video, she was kicking some ass. She was fighting back and she didn't get raped. I mean, she didn't get graped. Great, excuse me, I can't say that because the algorithm hates the word. So she could not be a lady in that moment because of the environment changed. Women that grow up in the ghetto, the hood, they can't afford to be ladies every day. Not like I'm saying that you carry yourself like a ratchet thought all the time. But you got to be able to switch it up. Yes, Amonique. Amonique says this happened in Tampa, Florida, where I live. Yes, she had to kick some ass. So I say that to say it's a thin line. Every woman has two dualities in her of being a variation of good and bad. Nobody is all good all the time and nobody is really bad all the time. Even bad people have their good sides. But if you combine common sense, you can be a better, well-rounded person in general. And that's what a better class of woman is. She's a better, well-rounded person. So back to the hood. Couldn't be a lady in the hood because it's dangerous. So... Sometimes I would get jobs when I was younger where I would have to travel, you know, an hour or two outside of my community 
to communities where I saw nothing but beauty and, you know, people, you know, acting like they had sense, like I wasn't living in the jungle. And there I was able to openly be a lady, be feminine and everything else without anyone bothering me. And it's so crazy that you would have to travel outside your immediate environment to be able to do that. And so in doing that, I knew that one day I would leave the hood for good. I knew that one day Faith was going to go somewhere where Faith can truly be who she is, the essence of on the inside. Now, let me tell you about good girls. How can I say that are actually sheep in wolves clothing? Now, you got some women that are born and raised in the suburbs. They got two parents, a mommy and a daddy. And because they're so sheltered, they look at the rap videos and movies and things that they see on TV. And they think urban rap culture, urban hood culture is cool. And so they have it within them and within their hearts and within their souls and deep in the reticences of their spirits to be a bad girl. But because of the environment that they're in, they have to keep their good girl sheep clothing on for mommy and daddy. So some of these girls would go pick up, travel to the hood to slum. And you know the, the type of females I'm talking about. These are the type of females where they living in the suburbs, mommy and daddy, they, they're protected. But they come to the hood and they, they get slutted out. Because that's what's within them. That's what they so desire to be. So they go to the hood and they dress the biggest hoe, the biggest sluts that they can think of, that they've ever seen on TV and in the rap videos. And they come to the hood and they end up running into fast talking Pookie and Ray Ray. They done talked them up out of them draws because they slow. Right. Demetrius says, I've always said that if you'd feel embarrassed about your family finding out about it, then why do it? Because they thought it was cool. I'm telling you, this is what was within them. Exactly. Simone Lewis says being a lady and being feminine can make a woman an easy target. And, and I, I will add to that, uh, Simone it will make you an easy target in certain environments. So that's the reason why I had to travel outside the hood to do that. I wasn't able to do what was deep within me until I got outside of the hood. So I'm the opposite of the suburbanite girl that traveled to the hood to be the hoe like she always wanted to be. So back to this this suburban night hoe. She comes to the hood and she running the fast talking Pookie and Ray Ray. And she get to live out her whole fantasies. She get to do all the stuff she saw in the rap videos. And then she get to go back and brag to her friends all the little fun shit that she did. And so she goes back with one, two, three, four, five more. This is the reason why I tell you there's a thin line between hoes and good girls. The alleged good girls, because I'm telling you, they were never good. They had that in them. 
some of you are born hoes. That is your mentality because you seek that which you desire. There's no way you could be in a community where you're safe, where you're growing up in an environment where you're taught not to live like the people in the jungle, but you yearn for the jungle. That's something that's already within you. So these hoish ass suburbanites will call themselves coming down to the south side and to the west side and different places in the hoods of Chicago to slum. But they were already sluts. They were already ghetto hoes in their mentality. They just needed a place to act it out. And so they go back home pregnant with a Pookie and Ray Ray kid. I'm going to tell you how there's a difference and then there's no difference. Because see, the suburbanite good girl, she got a reputation. She can't let mommy and daddy know she out here fucking. So do you think she going to tell mommy and daddy she pregnant by Pookie or Ray Ray? No. So she heads over to Planned Parenthood. I'm telling you how these things go. Now y'all take the information and do with it what you will. But oh good Kathy or good Susan or good Bethany whose black mama and black father will put their foot up to her ass if they found out what a hoe she is and that she's pregnant by Pookie and Ray Ray. Would, would die, have a conniption and everything else. So she goes down to Planned Parenthood and she gets rid of it. Whew. Ah, I got away with it, she says to herself. Now you would think that that right there, where she almost got caught, would keep her from being or continuing to participate in whole activity. But no, like I said, if you are a lady, if you're a good girl, it's something that's already within you. Like I said, I would go to quiet communities so that I can freely be that which was in, within me, a good girl. The suburbanite will also go to the hood to be that which what was within them to be a hoe. So even though she got pregnant that first time by Pookie and Ray Ray, she's going to keep going out, keep getting slutted out, keep getting trains run on her in the obscurity of the ghetto where nobody knows her. She's no better than Becky that does the same thing. Simone Lewis says, why would people from the suburbs want to go to the hood when so many people that are from the hood are trying to make it out? Good question. Because they don't understand what it's like to live in the hell hole because everything that they know about the hood, they saw on boys from the hood. Everything they knew about the hood, they saw in a rap video. And so to them, it's been glamorized the same way it's been glamorized to Becky. And that's the reason why she goes diving for um, Negro penis in the hood. Because it's been glamorized to them, they don't have to live there. But you'll have a lot of uh, suburbanite women admit to you that they used to go slumming in the hood so that they can live out their whole fantasies. And so you got the first abortion under the belt, then you got the second abortion under the belt, and then it becomes a revolving door.
because see, she understands because of her upbringing that having children out of wedlock is a no-no. So that's the reason why she keeps getting the abortions. So you see, she has a, a used up womb, but nobody knows. And so she gets to sit later on in life in judgment of Brenda who had the baby. She didn't have her three babies that she aborted. But Brenda had her three babies. So later on down the line, she can go get married, act like all that whole stuff never happened, and sit in judgment of Brenda. This is what I keep trying to show y'all. There's a thin line between these hoes and so-called saints out here. A very thin line. But they will sit up here and have you think that under the guise of a wedding ring that they have been sanctified the entire time. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, they're no better. There are really no completely good people out here. I don't care how many of you think that your woman only had you and this, that, and the other. Yeah. That you know of. Because like I said, I have seen some things in my time that folks in them did and got away with and they get to sit in judgment of others because they shit just ain't never caught up with them. Dominique um, says they are only going there to have sex, not to live there. <laughs> exactly. That exactly. That's that's the whole point of it all. They're not trying to actually. Just like it's the same thing with white people or white women doing cultural appropriation. Yeah, you know, on, on Kim Kardashian, a, a braid her hair up and do cornrows, and she might even tan. She might even wear, uh, um, what do you call it, a, a, a Afro wig. But she don't want to be black for real. They don't want to be black for real. And it's the same thing with the, the, the uh, suburbanite children. They may come to the hood. They may act like they, you know, bad. But they don't want to be in the hood for real. When it comes time to go rob somebody or beat up somebody or shoot somebody. Uh, suburbanite Raymond not trying to do all that. Raymond is not Ray Ray. See, Ray Ray do all that. Raymond just came to party. Demetrius says, I remember what my parents said when they dropped me off at college. They were like, no hood rats ever. And see, that's just the thing. Sometimes, Demetrius, Sometimes you got to be able to discern what a hood rat actually is. Now, you do have your hood rats that you can you can generally see they're hood rats. But then you got your suburban night hood rat too. That done been hanging out in the hood, that done been screwing around with Pookie and Ray Ray and the whole football team, that done been pregnant a few times and got an abortion. You have to really be able to look out for that too. Because, see, it's not just Bunquisha, but it might be Aaliyah and Bunquisha. Aaliyah grew up in the hood. Bunqu I mean, Aaliyah <laughs> grew up in the suburbs. Bunquisha is the hood rat. But they're the one and the same. They both enjoy the same thing. 
It's just that Aaliyah can hide hers better than Boonquisha. And so that's why I said it's a mentality, it's a mentality, it's a mentality to be a better class of woman. Reaction Satisfaction says they want to be part-time. They want to be part-time black and hood characters. They are acting the part but seeking applause. Exactly. They want to be part-time hood. But they want to be able to get in the shower, wash the hood off, and then they want to go back to being in polite society. And it's a lot of them. Simone Lewis asks, what makes the hood so exciting to some people? I don't know. Because I grew up in the hood. It was not exciting for me because I grew up there. You would have to ask someone who went to slum in the hood, ask them why they did it. Because I know that when I was growing up there, I always wanted to get out. I always wanted to go somewhere where I can just exhale and, and, and just be a lady and not have to worry about somebody seeing that as a weakness. But they go there for the excitement, for the, for the shits, for the thrills. And they have no idea what it's really like. And uh, since Reaction Satisfaction, a.k.a. CK, is in the house, he used to always tell me all the time that he was on both sides of the track because he said he grew up as Carlton Banks. And then it's kind of like the reverse of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air where Carlton Banks was taken out of Bel-Air and put in the hood. It's difficult surviving in the hood and you're a gentleman. It's difficult surviving in the hood and you're a lady. So Carlton Banks has to, how can they say, um, he has to convert. He has to convert. He has to blend in. What is he saying? He says, you don't have to compete in the hood and substandard, subpar, and sugar is socially acceptable. You'll never be shamed for being a loser when everyone is losing. Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. That was, that was actually pretty damn good. I'm going to go ahead and give you your roses on that. Where's my round of applause? Very well said. Very well said. Reaction satisfaction. And he's right. You know, if you are a small fish in a big pond where you're at, where everybody is overachieving, and you're just average, you're substandard, you're subpar. It's kind of like um, when the um, ugly Bettys or ugly Beckys the white guys in their community won't touch them with a 10 foot pole because they're average and subpar in their community. So they bring their behinds down to the ghetto where they know white skin will be worshipped and they get to feel good about themselves because they're with a bunch of self-hating losers that's going to pedestalize them. Well, it's no different than uh, suburban Aaliyah. Suburban Aaliyah, she's subpar and substandard where she's at. Ain't nobody feeling the mixed girl texture hair over there in the burbs. 
ain't nobody thinking about her and her overweight self. Over there in the burbs, they have a standard. So she bring her overweight behind to the hood where hood Negroes worship big booty, even if it's attached to some um, sad rolls and, and, some, um, and some stomach hangage. So now she's not a loser anymore. She doesn't have to get in shape. She doesn't have to do anything. She can go to the hood and she can throw on some um, name brand designer clothes. And hood people will worship her because they think she's rich with a big booty. So reaction satisfaction hit that nail exactly on the head. You'll never be shamed for being a loser when everyone is doing worse than you. It's easy to go somewhere and be a winner when you can throw some money around, when you can throw some white skin in the game, in the hood. Only in the hood. We love mediocrity in the hood. As a matter of fact, a lot of us in the hood don't even know what doing good really is. We got little girls in the hood talking about they got getting the bag because they getting with an old man drawing social security benefits. That's how bad it is. So I wanted to drop down on you guys tonight to discuss the good girl and the bad girl and kind of break down the different nuances that that can go into because there is definitely a thin line and everybody is not all of one thing. I want to reiterate this. Nobody's all the way good. Nobody's all the way bad. But you should be well-rounded. Everybody's going to make mistakes, but you should learn from them. There's no perfect people, but you should strive to be the best person you can be. That is what being a better class of woman is. And in doing that and just trying to be the best person that you can be, there are certain behaviors that are just going to naturally disappear. Like habitual cursing, like wanting to twerk at every, in everybody's face anytime, no matter where, the funeral, at the high school graduation, at the kid's birthday party, those things are going to naturally go away when you start seeking to be a better person because you're going to recognize poor behavior for what it is. And so then you'll have Rihanna, you have your Rihanna's. Rihanna's um, Super Bowl performance was uh, wonderful. And I like that she respected the family-friendly content. It was obvious to me that she thought of her child in the years to come. So she wasn't out there all raunchy with a pregnant belly trying to twerk in front of everybody. When you know better, you do better. So it becomes something natural that you do instinctively. Same with Sierra when she married Russell Wilson. Now, you're still going to have your Amber Roses. You're still going to have your Lizzo's. That's going to be the worst class of women that they can be. They're going to make excuses for themselves. 
make excuses for why I'm overweight, make excuses for why I have a bad reputation and a high body count. They're going to make excuses. They're never going to learn from their mistakes. And notice that I said, people make mistakes. You're supposed to learn from them. Sierra allegedly had a high body count, allegedly. But now she's a better class of woman. She learned from her mistakes. She elevated and it shows. The glow up is supposed to show in your deeds and your actions. Amber Rose is never going to elevate if she continues down the trajectory that she's going. She's one of those women you can't tell shit. She's one of those women that don't want to learn shit. She's one of those people that's always going to make an excuse for what she did in the past and what she's going to do in the future. And she's going to be sitting there talking about, oh, I don't want a man anymore. I'm, I'm done with men. I just rather be by myself because don't nobody want to be with you. You're ratchet. So you're going to make it seem as if this was a choice when you've been searching for the last 30 years. Now you want to try to sell to the public that it's a choice. Oh, I just choose to be by myself now. You done ran through everybody. At this point, it's not a choice. Men see you, they get what they want from you, and then they run. And at some point, you're going to have to look at what is the common denominator. And <laughs> Demetrius Agashikata said, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I I'm about to say some stuff that's going to make some folks angry. But it is the truth. It's the truth. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, then that is the very definition of insanity. Try something different. Pick you. Brittany Renner is now a better class of woman. I don't know. I don't know enough about her. I never really followed Brittany Renner. A lot, a lot of people talk about her, but I, I haven't followed her in particular. I know about Amber Rose. I know about Lizzo. I try not to talk about people I don't know about. I heard some good things about Brittany Renner and I've heard some bad things. I don't know what spiritual journey she's on, but hopefully if she's on a good spiritual journey, that is going to show in her deeds and actions, and she will find a man who will see that in her, and he is going to pick her up, y'all. And that's the other thing I want to touch on. See, men be sitting up here lying. Yeah, I said lying. Talking about you wouldn't get with a woman with a past and all this other stuff. Meanwhile, Hoes is getting married every day. There are men that are actually marrying women that they found at the strip club, as a matter of fact. I have seen uh, shows where they have um, the women, um, what was that one particular show, Married to Medicine? I really do believe that that chick Toya used to be a prostitute or a stripper. I'm not saying that she was, but it just doesn't make any sense, you know, how she said she met her husband, Eugene. I really believe that he was her trick at one point in time. And he married her and, 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 and he, he gets what he deserves. I mean, she's got allegations of sleeping around on him with men in the community and all this other stuff. 
So, you know, if you is that that's what you pick, that's what you get. But the point is, hoes are getting picked. So you men can't sit up here and lie and say that you're not getting with them. That's the reason why it, I have always maintained that it don't matter how good you are. Being good is not the magic ticket. And I have always maintained that black women have already done the whole being um, submissive, being friendly, being nice, looking out for the whole family, taking care of everybody. We've already done that like 10 times over many, many centuries and decades. And where exactly has that gotten us? What exactly did we get rewarded with for our sacrifices to the community? See, for all of you thinking, oh, if you just do this and you do that for your man, he's going to love you and he's going to put a ring on your finger and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. There's a laugh. Cardi B is married right now. Hater Truth says, Black women have never done the submissive thing, Faith. Stop it. What are you talking about? Hater Truth. You remember Big Mama? Big Mama who's now at going extinct? Big Mama was the epitome, the epitome of submissive to the entire community. Oh, well, Big Mama took everybody in the house. Big Mama watched everybody kids. Big Mama looked the other way while her husband cheated and messed with the people in the family. Big Mama was ultra submissive. What are you talking about? See, before y'all come in here and lie, before y'all trumple up in here lying, y'all know y'all got a big mama that y'all depended on. And she was all those things. And what thanks did she get for it? Hmm? What thanks big mama get? For watching everybody's kids, letting the husband cheat, let the husband feel on the kids. What did she get for that? What does she get for not saying nothing? What goes on in the house stays in the house. Face bitch. Black women had been doing that. Big mama was getting her ass beat. Just a regular guy. Ooh, another good comment from just a regular guy. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on a second. I got to get my applause ready. He says, Big Mama and the color purple women were submissive and silent punching bags. Oh, my God. Where is it? Where is it? Precisely. That was the thanks Big Mama got for all the dirt that she did. Okay, Big Mama was a bad girl. So if y'all want to know the definition of what a bad girl is, look no further than Big Mama and her rule of what goes on in the house stays in the house. Big Mama ruined a lot of people's lives, by the way. She sure did. So this good girl, bad girl thing and uh, women wanting to um, snub their nose down at the next woman because they think they are good and they think they got away with 
not um, airing out their dirty laundry. I got your number. I got your number. There's some of you that sit up here and lie and say, oh, I'm married. You're not married. You just claim to be married so people will shut up. There's some people that have come up in here and lie and say they ain't never had no kids. Not none that you brought into the world, but the ones that you murked in the abortion clinic. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about them. But you get to have your hand and look down on Brenda, Boonquisha, Aisha, and Monique. Because your shit just didn't get discovered. Now, I know a young woman that did this very thing that I'm talking about. She um, was uh, out here slumming it up. But living in the burbs, got pregnant a lot of times while she was in high school and got got it taken care of, so to speak. And so her mama that was uh, always in the church was so proud of her. Her mama, by the way, helped sweep them abortions under the rug. And then she married her off to some guy in the church that was getting ready to go to the military. So. She waited and she wanted to get um, pregnant right away because she wanted to solidify the marriage. It took them five years to have one baby. And they, I mean, they were really trying. And she would come by the house crying and all that. It was real easy for her to get pregnant, you know, all while she was in high school and she was running and get those abortions. But what a lot of people don't understand is Having an abortion isn't easy on a woman's body. It's not a walk in the park. It's not like you just go up in there and go, you know, poop, poop, poop. I got an abortion. I'm, I'm good. No, they're, they're sucking and vacuuming and pulling at your reproduction organs to get that baby out. So imagine if you go through this, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but dozens of times. Because you use an abortion that's going to birth drop. So then when you finally, you finally are able, you're under the sanctity of marriage now, and you want to give something to your husband, that womb is woe out from all that sucking and suctioning of those babies that you did not want. So she was able to at least have the one. And I, I feel as if she ought to be grateful for that. Another thing is she gained a lot of weight trying to keep the booty fat. And then she got fat. Being overweight also gets in the way of fertility. And so after the boy, she wanted a girl. And I saw her struggle for another five to six years trying to have another baby and it never happened. So what happens is when you get past the age of 35, your fertility goes down by half. So now, she, not only does she have half of her fertility gone now, but she, she has the past of all those abortions and being overweight. And so it, it just was not likely for her to, to, you know, be able to conceive again. So now here she is. She didn't hit 40. Once you hit your 40s, 
you got less than a 10% chance of conception, ladies. Because now you're going into premenopause. Now, if you are a fit woman and you didn't have 50 abortions, premenopause may actually make you more fertile. But if you've been messing up your body, it's going to be the opposite. So needless to say, her husband went on to have an outside baby with another woman, and that woman had a baby girl, what she had been wanting. What she had been wanting. And of course, it was devastating. Now, it's a small, small world because when he was in the military, he ran into someone that knew her, a fella that she had been dealing with in the past, somebody that had helped her pay for one of her abortions. And this fella mindlessly let it be known that she was pregnant by him on a couple of occasions. So he didn't even know that his wife had been pregnant before his first child with her. She never told him. And so as she was coming to him crying and begging to Let's try for another baby. I want a baby. I want a baby. I want a baby. He looked at her and he said, do you? Because I heard that you, you killed a couple. So see, ladies, a lot of times you think you're getting away with something. You think you're going to carry something to your grave. But what's done in the dark always comes to the light. And see, the other woman that he had gotten pregnant, he was talking about, she was, not he, she was talking about that other lady like a dog because that other lady he got pregnant had two other children. And so she would run that lady's name down in the mud. How could he want her? She's a baby mama. She a two-time baby mama and I this, that, and the other. And I preserved my room for him and this, that, and the other. Did you, though? Did you, though? Amanique, it was low for her not to tell him because it has a lot to do with fertility. Now, imagine you're drilling for oil. You're drilling, you're drilling, and you're drilling, and you're drilling, thinking you're going to get hit oil. But the people that you bought the land for never told you that they spilled the oil somewhere else. And so there's no oil on that land to drill. And when you go to these fertility doctors, they ask you these questions. And she set up and lagged. So his feelings were hurt because of the lie. So it was low for her not to mention 
that she had had those abortions. And they're trying to create a family because that might have been something that they would have both needed to know. I don't think she can lie to a doctor, Amonique. I think what she probably did was ask that that information not be shared. And you can very well do that. You can very well do that. But I don't think she could lie. But it's kind of dirty not to share with your husband. And you're trying to make children together. So I say that to say that is a example of a bad, bad girl. Because you have information and you're withholding it and it's something that could very well be important to the both of you. So he ended up divorcing her, needless to say. And he got with the other woman that had his daughter. The woman that she ran, whose name she ran down into the ground, that she wasn't a good enough woman because she was a two-time baby mama. But at least he knows her birth history. At least he knows she won't lie to him. And you can say what you want, but that means something, to, especially to a man. If a man can't trust you, he's not going to want to build anything with you. And that's most men. So while you have all these dating coaches trying to tell you how to sit, how to look pretty, and all this other stuff, they need to also tell you, like Demetrius Higashikata said earlier to, in this live stream, talk about honesty. Because that's something that's mutually respected between men and women. Honesty and respect. You definitely not going to want to be somebody that's going to lie to you, especially about things that are so important like that. So that's the reason why I say there's a thin line between a good girl and a bad girl. Because homegirl thought she was good with her 50 million abortions and lying about it. And all her discrepancies that she swept under the rug. And she thought she was better than that other woman that had had her children. And this is why I say men lie. Men lie. It has nothing to do with being good or none of that. It has everything to do with can he trust you? That's the number one thing. And once she lost his trust, she lost her man. It wasn't about cheating because she never cheated on him. It was, wasn't about any, uh, her not um, being a sad six because she wasn't a sad six. It wasn't about any of that. The man lost trust in her and that's why he left i just want to 
go ahead and shout out all the people that came in to support today. I have Hybrid was the first person who came in. So I just want to give Hybrid her round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much for being the first person. And looking down here, I see BMT, Demetrius Higashikata. Welcome, welcome. I also see, um, who else was in here? I believe it was, uh, oh, I'm Anike Mama Max. How can I forget? Thank you so much for joining the show. And um, I know it was somebody else. Oh, Reaction Satisfaction, absolutely. I got to give my man his round of applause, as always. Reaction satisfaction. He did the intro and the outro to this video. So thank you so much for showing up here. <laughs> much appreciation. Much appreciation. So I believe that's it. Thank you again, everybody, for coming in. Please like the video, um, share the video because that keeps me on top. And with that, I want to say mwah, peace. I love all of you and I'm out. Holla. <laughs>